okay so we have defined what a laplace transform is and based on the you know this first principle uh, you know the definition of the laplace transform which will be managed to compute laplace transform of several standard functions in this lecture we will look at certain properties of laplace transforms and how you know these properties can be exploited to work out the laplace transforms of you know other functions which which may be more complicated at, or in some time in some cases uh, you know there are we will show how uh, laplace transforms of functions which are which could be worked out directly from first principles may also be obtained using these principles uh, these properties of laplace transform that's the content for this lecture okay so first is linearity right so what does laplace transform do it takes a function and gives you another function right so it uh, you know function of s where the value of s is going to be restricted as we have seen several examples now if you are given two functions f1 of t and f2 of t and both of them have laplace transforms f1 of s and f2 of s then you know the laplace transform is a linear operation so if you take the laplace transform of some linear combination of these two functions c1 f1 of t plus c2 f2 of t then the laplace transform of this linear combination of functions is in fact simply given by c1 f1 of s plus c2 f2 of s that is c1 times laplace transform of the first function plus c2 times the laplace transform of the second function right so the laplace transform of a linear combination of uh, of functions is the linear combination of the laplace transform of the functions right so this is the property of linearity right so of course you have to ensure that you know uh, now the convergence is guaranteed only um, you know for those values of s for which both f1 and f2 uh, are well defined right so in general this will extend so you can club together many such functions add them all up and then s is going to be restricted by you know the most restrictive of all of them right so that's how um, linearity plays out so let's look at an example where we can apply this property so so we have this function f of t is equal to sine square of a t t greater than 0 now suppose we want to find its laplace transform so we see that f of s is laplace transform of sine square of a t but sine square of a t can be written as 1 minus cosine of 2 a t by 2 now so you can think of this half times the function 1 minus half times another function cosine of 2 a t so so i using this linearity uh, property I can write this uh, down as half times Laplace transform of 1 minus half times Laplace transform of cosine a to a t but Laplace transform of 1 is something which we already know it is just 1 over 2 times 1 over s it gives you and then minus 1 over a half times we also know the Laplace transform of cosine of 2 a t it's just s over s squared plus 4 a square so if I club these two together then I get um, 1 over s I can pull out um, uh, so, uh, so, so I can write it as s times s squared plus 4a squared in the denominator and then I will get s squared plus 4a squared minus s squared so that will be uh, 4a squared will cancel with one of the 2's and so I get 2a squared divided by s times s squared plus 4a squared right so it is some simple algebra. So the point is that using this apparently very naive property we, we managed to work out uh, the Laplace transform of a function using the Laplace transform of a function which we already know. So the answer is for this problem it is 2a squared by s times s squared plus 4a squared with the condition that s should be greater than 0. Now let us look at another property of Laplace transform. If you take the Laplace transform of the derivative of a function right. So suppose you are um, you know the Laplace transform of some function f of t and you take the Laplace transform you are interested in the Laplace transform of the uh, transform of the derivative of this function right so in other words you want to know integral 0 to infinity df by dt times e to the minus st dt so let us integrate this by parts so we have so now the natural uh, you know function to treat as v so in, in the, the terminology of integration by parts you have something like u dv so here u is going to become e to the minus st and dv will be df by dt right so it's a standard integration by parts so you have e to the minus st times f integral from 0 to infinity minus vdu you have to do integral 0 to infinity minus s 
f of t e to the minus s t right. So, this uh, comes from taking a derivative of this function e to the minus s t. So, you get a minus s and so it is convenient to write it like here and so now you have you know only one of these boundary uh, terms will contribute. So, at t equal to infinity so we assume right. So, here I have subtly made the assume assumption that you know f of t is I have said that it is a reasonable function. So, it is the kind of function which will die down uh, sufficiently fast so that at t equal to infinity this is going to be you can take it to be 0 and at t equal to 0 you just have minus f of 0 right. So, this e to the minus s t will just give you 1. So, you have minus f of 0. So, plus s times the Laplace transform of f of t. So, the key point is that the Laplace transform of the derivative of a function is simply given by s times the Laplace transform of the function itself minus f of 0 right. So, the value of the function at the starting point matters for this when you are taking the derivative or you know Laplace transform of the derivative. So, like I said without going into any details or you know uh, uh, doing a careful study of the properties of this function f of t, I am just saying that we assume f of t to be a reasonable function where this works out right. So, which is the justification for you know these kinds of um, um, operations will be just based on how you know it works out for us right. So, we will just take functions which are reasonable and work it out and see that it works that is all. So, we do not go into the nitty gritty of proving these statements and so on right. So, that is would be for a more advanced or a more abstract course which is outside the scope of our present um, present attempt right. So, let us learn to use these properties ok. So, let us take another uh, example and see how this plays out. So, example is again we can take the same function f of t is sin squared of a t for t greater than 0. Now, if we take a derivative of this function you see that um, I mean we already know that the, the Laplace transform of this function we worked it out and we saw that it is 2 a square divided by s times a square plus 4 a square. So, if we take a derivative of this function it is 2 a sin of a t times cosine of a t and also we observe that the value of this function at t equal to 0 is just 0. So, if we want to work out the, the Laplace transform of the derivative in other words Laplace transform of 2 a sin of 2 a t times cosine of 2 a t it is just going to be s times the Laplace transform of the function itself which is very simply written as 2 a squared by s squared plus 4 a squared right. So, but now we observe that in fact this 2 a sin of a t times cosine of a t can be written as you know there is a factor of a which I can pull out which is a linear uh, operation. So, uh, you know constant factors will come out without any issues. So, but 2 sin 2 a t times uh, 2 sin a, a t times cosine of a t is the same as sin of 2 a t. So, what we have managed to show is you know a times the Laplace transform of sin of 2 a t is equal to 2 a squared by a squared plus 4 a square. So, a if I cancel a on both sides, so I am left with you know the Laplace transform of sin of 2 a t is equal to 2 a by a squared plus 4 a square. So, which is not a surprise right. So, this is something that we already know right because we know that uh, the Laplace transform of sin of b t we worked out is just b divided by sin squared uh, s squared plus b squared. So, in place of b we have 2 a here right. So, this is just a um, an alternate way of seeing something which we already know ok. So, let us look at how you know this idea can be generalized. So, you do not have to work out just the Laplace transform of the first derivative you can look at the second derivative the third derivative and in fact the nth derivative. So, if you take the Laplace transform of the nth derivative you see that you we, we use the same uh, logic as just above and say that it is equal to s times the Laplace transform of the n minus 1th derivative because this is like taking the so first derivative of this function f n minus 1 of t is d n by d t n of f of t. So, minus you know the value of this the n minus 1th derivative of this function at t equal to 0. So, now, but we can go ahead and you know apply the same uh, uh, same formula if you wish or you know same logic in a recursive way. So, again you apply it to n minus 1th level then and apply it to n minus 2th level n minus 3th level so on. So, in the end 
you can convince yourself that you are going to get this result which is that the Laplace transform of the nth derivative of a function f of t is you know s time s to the power n times Laplace transform of f of t minus s to the n minus 1 times f of 0 minus s minus s to the n minus 2 times the value of the first derivative of the function at 0 and minus so on all the way up to minus uh, you know the value of the function uh, the nth n minus 1th derivative of the function at 0 right. So, this is something that you can quickly cross check and and convince yourself of right. So, once again I have assumed that this function is uh, not only is the function reasonable but all its derivatives up to nth derivative are all all reasonable right. So, that we do not run into any you know technical issues with regard to whether uh, some particular order uh, derivatives um, Laplace transform whether it is defined or not and so on right. So, let us uh, agree to not worry about these technical issues at this point. So, now we look at an example. So, let us say you have this function f of t is equal to sin of a t, t greater than 0. So, the second derivative, so we have already worked out the Laplace transform of this function, but let us look at it from a different perspective. So, if I take a derivative once I get a times cosine of a t, then if I take another derivative then I get minus a squared sin of a t which is the same as saying minus a squared f of t. So, if I take the Laplace transform of this equation on both sides I have Laplace transform of the second derivative is equal to minus a squared I have invoked linearity minus a squared times Laplace transform of f of t, but the Laplace transform of the second derivative according to this property that we just uh, discovered it I can uh, rewrite the left hand side as s square times Laplace transform of f of t minus s times f of 0 minus the first derivative of uh, this function evaluated at 0 which is equal to minus a square l of f of t. Now, uh, if I uh, so f of 0 itself is 0, but the first derivative if I take it then I get cosine of um, cosine of uh, a t times a and if I put t equal to 0 I will just get a. So, I bring this a to the right hand side. So, I have s square plus a square times Laplace transform of f, f of t is equal to a and immediately we have this result you know Laplace transform of sin of a t is a by s square plus a square which is something we have worked out already right. So, this is just an illustration of you know how we can use these properties and many times uh, the evaluation of Laplace transforms uh, can be um, can be made very efficient if you if you use the right property for the right situation. Okay, so let us look at another property. So, this is the translation property. So, suppose we have the Laplace transform of function f of t and it is defined by this equation and it is defined for some s greater than alpha right. For some constant a if we work out the Laplace transform of this function e to the a t times f of t. So, we see that we have a to e to the a t. So, in place of e to the minus s t it becomes e to the minus s minus a t. So, in fact immediately we see that this is going to be uh, a shifted version of the Laplace transform of the first function. So, you get uh, there is a translation of the Laplace transform which happens. So, which is f of s minus a and now convergence is assured if s minus a is greater than alpha. So, we have this result the Laplace transform of this you know e to the a t times f of t is equal to f of s minus a. It is a translated uh, you know version of the Laplace transform of the original function itself and now convergence being guaranteed is if s is greater than a plus alpha ok. Let us look at an example where this is applied very simple example if you just take f of t equal to 1 for t greater than 0 this function is just a constant. Now, if we uh, take the Laplace transform of this function we have seen that this is 1 over s for s greater than 0. So, now if I multiply the original function with e to the a t then invoking this property I have 1 over s minus a and this is defined for s greater than a, but this is a result which we have directly worked out. So, the Laplace transform of e to the a t is indeed 1 over s minus a s greater than a right. So, this is something which we are familiar with. Now, let us look at um, another example if I have sin of b t then if I am interested in um, you know we know that its Laplace transform is b over sin squared plus b squared. Now, if I multiply this function with e to the a t times sin of b t then I get b over instead of s I have to write s minus a. So, s minus a the whole squared plus b squared and now 
s is restricted to be greater than a right so this is another example where this is this is apply okay so you can play with this you can create your own uh, you know interesting functions and find their laplace transforms using these properties so there is one more property which i want to uh, describe which is the differentiating the laplace transform itself so we saw f of s is given by this integral right and if i take successive derivatives of this function the, the laplace transform with respect to s so we have you know first derivative will give me a minus um, minus 1 times e to the minus st times t so every time i take a derivative i'll get a minus t out, out. so and if i collect all the minus signs outside here so i, I write it as minus 1 to the 1 integral 0 to infinity t times f of t e to the minus st dt so you see that now this is like looking like the Laplace transform of t times f of t. If I take a second derivative, I get minus 1 squared, the whole square, times uh, times the Laplace transform of t squared f of t. So in general, you can continue like this and we have this result. The Laplace transform of t to the n times f of t is minus 1 to the n, the nth derivative of f of s. Right? So this is also a very useful property and you can exploit it to work out you know interesting laplace transforms of uh, you know of functions of interest so let's look at one example very simple one so we know that f of t is equal to 1 has a laplace transform 1 over s so if i take a derivative of this function then that must correspond to t right so indeed that should be just and also i have to I have to put in this minus sign so 1 over s squared right we have already seen this happen so in in general in fact we can work out the uh, the Laplace transform of t to the n, right? So it's going to be just minus one to the n times the nth derivative of f of s, which in this case will just turn out to be n factorial divided by s to the n plus one, right? We have already seen that uh, if t, if you have t, you will get one over um, one over uh, s squared. So if I put uh, n equal to one, so I will get one over s squared right you can look at uh, you know higher powers but basically we, we have a general expression directly as a consequence of this uh, result involving the derivatives of the laplace transform okay so that's all for this lecture thank you